Hi everybody. In this video render video, we want to take a look at interior lighting within Twin Motion. This is a topic that I think there's a lot of interest in, but for particularly for beginners, there's not a lot of guides on how to go about setting it up. And more specifically, what to do if you find yourself in a situation that's different to a scene that you've used previously. In this tutorial, this beginner-friendly tutorial, we'll take a look at four different scenes, and I'll talk about how I would go about lighting them. We'll take a look at the lighting setups that I use, and we'll take a look at the path tracer end results. Okay, everybody, so here we are in the first of the scenes that we're going to look at. This is intended as a pretty straightforward standard daytime dusk and then sort of evening shot. So we'll look at three variations on lighting setup for this one scene. And you can see it's a pretty nice setup. It's a very basic build. A lot of this just came from SketchUp. And so we've got a nice room with some furniture and some decorative elements. Okay. Now, for the setup for this render, I'm just going to try and do this without using artificial lights. And let's look at the first way to light your scene. I'm going to move myself out of the way. And a couple of things to note about this. We are using the path tracer in Twinmotion 2023.1.2. Uh, it's a little bit slower, I've noticed, than some of the other versions of Twinmotion's path tracer. I really think it's a little bit of a work in progress, but let's just look at our lighting setup. So in this, our first daytime shot with no lights, what we have is a couple of things keep sort of in mind. The first is the exposure tab right here. This will pop up quite a bit in all of the renders that we do. For now, I'm going to leave it at the default one, and I'm just going to leave auto exposure on. Please note as well that this section right here deactivates if you use the path tracer, except for the ambient tab and the white balance. Now, I should note, the ambient tab is supposed to work with the path tracer, Although I did a number of test renders with the ambient tab set to 1 and 5 and didn't really see any difference. But officially, it is supposed to work with a path tracer. So we can ignore those for now. Now, other than that, we are going to light our scene with the HDRI environment. And I'm using it enabled and it's set to Sky Dome. And because we're just using ambient HDRI light for this scene, I've picked this noon clear environment. Now, the important thing to note about this type of lighting, if you're not using artificial lights and you wanna get most of the light coming in from the environment, you will have to dial up the intensity. In this case, I put this all the way up to 20 and use the rotation to get light coming through the window. Other than that, we rendered all of these images at a consistent 4K, and we are using the path tracer. And again, I'm using the Twinmotion 2023.1.2, and the path tracer settings are set to high. Now, I have in my viewport turned the quality down very, very, very low, just so that it works, and so it doesn't really kind of completely override everything. Uh, on the screen, but this is what we're using. Samples 150, max bounces 10. All right, with that being said, that is how you would set up a very default lighting environment using just the ambient light. What's most important, let's go to the media tab, click on daytime, no lights, and you can see the uh, path tracer is going to just run through how this will actually look. All right, and to my mind, it looks pretty good. Again, by default, I should have been able to adjust the ambient, which would have really sort of put light into the shadowed areas. But I think all in all, just by lighting your scene using the HRI and the path tracer, you can get a pretty nice result. I think that looks pretty good using just those settings. Let's move on and look at an overcast scene. And then we'll also look at an evening scene for this same shot. Okay, moving on to look at a sort of evening or dusk scenario. We're not quite at doing a night shot just yet, but let's look at how we would do an evening shot. And there's a couple of reasons you might want to do this. One, the lighting is just a little bit softer, and the image is a lot more visually appealing. It's not as cool looking in terms of blue values, but it's a lot warmer, and the image is a lot softer. Also, please be mindful, what you see in the viewport is 
uh, very heavily reduced. I have to drop the quality and turn motion really far down to be able to record at the same time. But the overall re end results, I think, are quite nice. I'm going to move myself out of the way here again, and we're in our overcast. So to set up an overcast shot, naturally, we're going to go back to the ambience tab. Again, we will be using the path tracer on high settings. And I have made uh, just a few little changes here. The exposure has stayed the same and auto exposure is on again. You can definitely turn this off, but for these type of shots, you may find it easier. Now, I did crank the ambience to five, but again, not quite convinced that it is actually doing anything in this version of Twin Motion. Next is to find a suitable HDRI environment. I have ensured that it is a sky dome. And instead of putting the intensity at really, you know, 20 like we did before, this has been dropped down to 5. So let's look outside. It's a little bright out there, but all in all, you're still getting a lot of the coloring from this HRI sky is coming through. Now, I've also then made a few little changes. Let's turn off the path tracer and just look at these lights right here. Now, these materials have been changed from glass to go up to the materials tab and just go to, we're looking for basically the neon materials. So neon and neon one or neon two, I'm not sure there's a huge amount of difference. I think I use neon one, just drag it out. But because it's a dusk or evening shot, I don't necessarily want these to be very emissive. So I have selected these materials and dropped the intensity down. In a nighttime shot, it would be fine to leave these quite bright because, you know, they would be one of the main sources of light. But because we're in the evening time, they shouldn't be overpowering the other lights in your scene. So put them at quite a low setting. In addition, I have added in some other lights as well. At the very top of our scene, I have placed a spotlight. I've made sure to turn the spotlight on. The intensity is set to about 4,000 lumen, I believe, Generally, light bulbs in a ceiling uh, for most rooms are, I think, around the three to 4,000 lumens. The main thing here is also the attenuation. I'm trying to get this so that the light is casting shadows. You don't want the attenuation or the stop off to be really low. You can see it's only light this area. I need to make sure that the light is traveling far enough to add some shadows. And you can see that under the bed. This is the sort of main light within the actual scene. Now, other than that, we have also added an aerial light. You can see the area light is this big square light that's sitting outside. Now, some users will actually move the area lights and have it right up against the window. But as far as I know in Twin Motion, there's no real way to see through that light. So what you'll see is just a wall of white light. And I didn't really want that. So place the area light, big square light outside the window, but move it far away. Turn it on, and you're going to dial up and down the intensity as much as you want. But what matters is the attenuation. Again, attenuation is the fall off. And you can see if I move this, you can kind of see in the viewport how it extends how far that light is going. So I put the attenuation all the way to the max, 328 feet. And so the light itself, the light source is far back, but it is shooting that light straight forward and through the window. Now, in addition... I also have two omnidirectional lights set up here. Now, there might be a temptation to put these on and to turn on shadows, which is technically speaking more accurate. But for our purposes, I've left them off and I think you probably should too as well. So we've got glowing lights here, a omnidirectional, which is going to shoot light in 360 degrees and around your scene. But I don't have shadows on. And if we actually look at the settings for both of these, they're set to a color temperature of 4,500 Kelvin. It's a little bit warm, so it replicates a lamp. They're shooting at a very low intensity and the attenuation is pretty low. Really, they're just adding light to this area right here. Combine all of these things, especially the area light, pumping light on the outside, and you can see now how things are going to look. And I think overall, this looks quite nice. You're not relying as much on this ambient light, this basically the HDRI, the overcast HDRI. But all in all, I think that's a pretty nice result. 
you could definitely dial down the HDRI environment if you wanted this to be a little darker over here. But overall, I'm pretty happy with the look and feel. And please note, we're not trying to you know show anything outside here i'm not really too pushed about what's going on out here i just want to kind of focus on this area ideally you would hide this with uh really curtains or some sort of fabric and kind of maybe if you can't even hide the windows full stop but that's how i would go about lighting up a dusk scene in twin motion let's take a look really quickly at the end results and then we'll talk about really a very very dark but not quite night scene next okay everybody the last of the three variants that we look at for this particular scene is going to be this a kind of nighttime shot now, it's almost the same as the dusk, but if we look up here on the top right, obviously we've turned off the area light that was outside because we don't want really a square light blasting light in. Now, I've also picked a low sun overcast HDRI. Let's quit the media mode here. You can kind of, if I go back to this really quickly and turn off the path tracing, very, very dark sky. I would strongly recommend for night shots that you don't actually grab a kind of nighttime, you know, like Polyhaven style uh, HDRI. You know, really the odds of you doing a shot where it's completely, completely black outside is very, very kind of limited, I would imagine. There's still ambient light in the in the kind of the night sky that you can kind of use a little bit. And here we're still using a low sun overcast HDRI, but I have dropped the intensity really, really low. If you can possibly avoid doing a pitch black nighttime shot, I, I strongly recommend that you, you do. So here we are in our very much our darker evening setting. And again, I know that you can see kind of the environment through here. I'm not hugely pushed about that. I, I, you know, it's just whatever. That's not the point of this. Now, lighting this scene, we've got our two omnidirectionals set to the exact same. This is nice lamp lighting. I think it'll work. So it's an omnidirectional, low intensity, low attenuation, shadows off, a little bit warm. That will work nice. Now, we have our spotlight in here, and I did crank up the intensity, I think, a little bit on this spotlight. And you'll notice as well, the cone angle for this, spotlights in a lot of 3D programs are usually IES light profiles, but they're very specific. But realistically, a light bulb in really trying to light up your, your ceiling light is for the most part going to be shooting in a very wide cone, a wide angled range, basically. And so I, I've taken that up, and you can see we're getting some lovely shadows because of that. And again, let's just pop back here. And then the attenuation is just enough to kind of hit the floor, really. You don't need this light going through, but you certainly don't want the attenuation of that spotlight to stop halfway into the room. Now, overall, it's, it's pretty dark. There is one extra light that I've added, and that is this fellow right here. It's an area light, so a big square light up at the top. And if I crank the intensity, you can see what it's doing. It's blasting effectively uh, light that's matching really the corners of the room and is just shooting light downwards. It's really set to, you know, a very just kind of white color temperature, and it's not very strong at all so if i go back to it here go back to our area light and if i turn it off you can kind of see what's happening here we need extra light in the scene and yes even though it's a nighttime shot you still want to add a little bit even if it's just a little soft bit of light in to the scene nighttime does not mean pitch black and there there would be other light sources in the room realistically you could have other light leaking from maybe under the doorway or coming from another room so it's okay to not have the room be completely dark so we've got a pretty low intensity area light here and then the other thing that we have tweaked in this setting is to go back to our environment and we've turned off auto exposure. Now we were pretty happy leaving auto exposure on in the other shots, but for this one, I wanted to turn this off and this will give me manual control. Now I can still come back in here and I can still actually crank up the exposure, 
and overall the color values will kind of stay okay but realistically i'm pretty happy with leaving the exposure at one and turning off auto exposure all right with those being said that should get you through pretty much a kind of very late evening almost into nighttime shot and again the windows here i probably would not leave these open you really do want to cover these with curtains or something similar this way you have complete control over the light in your scene all right hopefully that will help you set up an evening into nighttime shot interior within twin motion let's move on to look at the next project or the next scene and see what we've got Okay, everyone, we've moved on to the second scene that we're going to look at. And as you can see here, it is a sort of modern style hotel room. And you can tell it's a modern style hotel room because it's got really uh, awful, uncomfortable looking furniture that nobody ever wants to sit on and excessive use of marble. Anyway, I want to look at then lighting a scene like this. There are a couple of things that you need to be mindful of. So I'm going to quit the media mode. I'm going to move myself out of the way. And here we can just kind of look at the scene within just the default setup. Things are a little bit different. It's a little bit of a more complicated scene. So we're going to have to use a variety of different techniques to light this. The first thing is because it's a hotel room, there's a good chance that you're going to have to show an outside. And so this is an outside scene that I grabbed from the warehouse and I brought it in. It is sitting on just a curved plane. So if you're going to do this where you have to show an environment, please note that the main thing is you have to be mindful of the horizon line. The perspectives do need to line up. And that's something I see a lot of my students mistake. They always just bring in a plane and then they just place it there, but they don't check that the horizon or lines of perspective line up. So here we have a plane. I think this looks like Kuala Lumpur, if I'm not mistaken. And it looks really, really, really nice out there. And we have positioned our cameras to hide any strange scenes. If you're going to use a plane outside, it needs to be far enough away. And you need to make sure that you're not seeing these areas up here where you can see the plane obviously stops. Okay, so that's something to be mindful of. We're going to do two shots here. We're going to do a daytime from two different angles. And we'll look at using doing a nighttime shot for the same room, just using artificial light. And that one will be a lot more challenging. Okay, we also have more variety in lighting sources here. Up at the top, we have an emissive plane. You can kind of see that just right here. Uh, inset lighting is, is kind of a big deal in, in hotel rooms, and you see it in renders a lot. People love putting like inset lighting into the ceiling. Um, it's a little bit cliche at this point, but it can look really, really nice. To do it in twin motion, you are going to use a neon material. And I have put that in here, and I've actually put it at a quite low intensity. Let's hit T on the keyboard, eyedropper. So by default, I think the glow value is set to like 75 for these, but this should be really low. So I think mine was at about 40. It's not going to look good in the viewport, but it will look okay when you actually render it. In addition, we have applied a glow material to these inset lights. Now, one thing to note about this, in a daytime shot, I would strongly recommend that you don't actually put spotlights in these. We will put spotlights in for our nighttime shot, but for the daytime shot, just don't. There's no really reason for it. Um, and we'll look at that in a second. We also have the same emissive material running around this excessively fancy light as well. Okay. What about outside lights? Well, if I scroll down here on my right, you'll see we have a couple of additional lights in the scene. We have two area lights that are going to be placed outside. Now, I've got one pointing from this side and one coming in from the left as well. This is so that really these area lights, we're going to turn on shadows for them. And you can see the light is enabled and shadows is actually turned on. If you have an area light outside it and it is pumping light into the scene, it should probably have shadows turned on, not volumetric shadows, just default shadows. And we'll kind of see that when we look at the finished renders. But really, if I hit, just hit or on my keyboard here, 
And again, I've got the path tracer set to very low. You can see the shadow under the chair right here. You do want this effect. Light from the outside should cast shadows. In addition, I do have a spotlight. Oh, thank you for a twin motion autosave. I do have a spotlight set up right up here. It is uh, at a pretty low kind of intensity, but again, the attenuation and cone angle are very wide. It's just pumping light into the scene. And I do again have shadows turned on. The only reason I really have this light turned on in the first place is just to get shadows because you want contact shadows under. And so again, low light intensity, almost non-existent intensity and pretty far attenuation. And that will give you contact shadows on the floor. Something that you wouldn't really get if you're using just the light from the HDRI. Speaking of the HDRI, again, you do want something nice and bright. I have set up for image one, I believe my environment is using just a bog standard new HDRI light. I've spun it, so I don't know, I don't think the sun is kind of blasting into this room. This is just ambient light. And the intensity, instead of cranking it to 20, I don't necessarily want all this blue light that would come with this HDRI. Uh, I don't necessarily want all of that in the room. I'm happy enough to just put it at 10, so we do get ambient light. But overall, a lot of the light for this shot is going to be coming in from these two area lights outside. All right, let's pause and take a quick look at the end result of the render. So let's look at our hotel room at night. Now, this is definitely a lot more challenging because you don't really get access to really, you know, some of the techniques that we've already mentioned. You can't really put area lights outside windows at night and blast light in, and you don't get access to that really nice HDRI lighting. So this one is definitely a bit more challenging to set up. I'm pretty happy with the results, but I would by no means claim to be a complete twin motion lighting expert. But as a beginner sort of tutorial, I think this lighting setup will help a lot of you out. So the first thing is obviously we don't want light from outside. So I did select this plane and I have pretty much just dropped the uh, luminosity. We don't really need this. You keep it there just in case there's a chance you'll see through the window, but you want to drop that luminosity. I did change the outside sky to one of the darker skies that comes with twin motion. It is kind of just, it's nighttime, but it's, you know, it's probably a little too starry for our purposes. Now, the other important thing, and I'm going to just move myself back in here. Oops. The glass. We really want to make sure that the actual glass, and you can see I've selected this, and I think I changed this to sort of a more reflective glass. Strictly speaking, if the outside isn't very bright you, and you're inside a room with lights on, you're not really going to see through the glass. And so I think using reflective glass in this situation works just fine. You can also make sure that you have your little uh, reflection probes placed in your scene. And for if you're new to Twin Motion, those will be under uh, tools and reflection probes. And so for an interior shot, just drop this nice little square one. You can put, I think, multiples in your scene, but I think just, just drag one right in there. Uh, as far as I know, these will still limit the reflections, even with the path tracer, to really the area within the reflection probe. Maybe if I'm wrong on that, somebody can correct me. But that will keep the reflections nice and tight on the windows. All right, we've left everything else almost the same except we have now added spotlights. So I've placed spotlights, and what you can do is place one, hold down uh, shift, drag out one, and make sure it's set to instance. Now, this means that each time you make changes to effectively this first one, or really any of them, it will transfer those changes to all of the other ones. Now, if you want more control, just make it a copy and adjust each light individually. But for this purposes, I've made instanced lights and I've placed quite a lot of them around the scene. Anywhere where we have one of these inset lights that's glowing, I've placed a spotlight. I think you could also do without placing these spotlights. The path tracer is good enough that if the glowing objects are strong enough, you can just use them as glowing light sources. 
but I, I kind of want these shadows and you can see that over here, you do get a nice spotlight fall off. Now, make sure to not crank these like so high that they're kind of like into the light. There should be an area where there's sort of a gap between really you, where you see the spotlight on the wall right there. So just pull them down a little bit. Intensity, incredibly low. Attenuation, just enough to get contact shadows. And then the cone angles is something that you're just going to have to tweak on an individual basis. They shouldn't really, I don't think, be very, very wide like this. Inset lighting is, is primarily intended to shoot downwards. And so just kind of tweak that to your heart's content. And if you find, for example, that one of the lights is maybe just affecting the area too much, feel free to just move it. Um, you know, there's realism up to a point, and then there's just a, a nicer looking image. So make tweaks and changes as you see fit. Now, a couple of other things. I did add one omnidirectional light. Now, remember, we did already have a spotlight hanging out up here, just shooting downwards. Now, this spotlight does have shadows enabled. The point of it is to get contact shadows really on areas like under the bed and where the furniture hits the ground. It's not really adding a huge amount of light to the scene. Very soft, 400 lumens, not much. Cone angle, pretty wide. Really, we're just using that one, that little spotlight, to get some shadows. Now, the other one is this omnidirectional light. And if I turn off these lights, you can just see, I'm just going to run through all of these and just turn them off. We don't need them. All right, turn off the reflection probes too. And just looking at the omni light here, and if we toggle it on and kind of off, you can see what it's doing. It's a pretty low intensity, but it's spreading light out in a 360 degree arc. It is completely, in many ways, artificial, but what we're trying to do is, is between this and the spotlight up here, try and mimic the effect that you get from the main light within the room. You're getting the shadows from one and the overall lighting from the other. Now, it's important that the omnidirectional light shadows are turned off. If you turn them on, you get something like that, and that looks really trippy. With all being said then, everything else is pretty good. We can go back to our ambience. And as far as I can remember, yeah, we left auto exposure on. You could absolutely turn this off and, and go in here and manually tweak the exposure. But I think with the auto exposure on, but controlling the lights, I do think you can get a pretty nice result. Moving on to the next scene, and this is a relatively straightforward lighting setup that I think might be useful for a lot of people in a lot of different scenarios. Now, you can see here, it looks pretty bright. So let's get out of the media mode and just take a quick look at our room. We've got a pretty basic library style room here, reading table on the left, large window on the front, and we've got some books and decorative elements. Now. We'll actually notice as well that in terms of light source, we really just have this big window. We have these kind of chandelier lights, but since they're not really on, we have to find alternative ways to light up our scene. Now, if we go to the ambience, I'm going to move myself out of the way again. You can see we have exposure set to zero, and we're using the auto exposure. And if we go to the rendered mode here and just do a quick sort of path tracer, low resolution render, let's put it back on low. And again, I have um, heavily modified these low settings. In fact, heavily modified all of the path tracer settings. So you can kind of see it's, it's not great. We need more light in the scene. And so how we fix this is relatively straightforward. We can place two area lights. So the first one, and probably the most important one, is going to be the one outside. Now, this one here is going to sit outside of your build, and it is going to shoot light forward. So it's about equal size as the window and the building itself. We do also want light coming through the triangular window at the top as well. It would be strange if light only comes in at the bottom instead. So we have light going all the way through. We have the camera, or I'm sorry, we have the light moved far enough back that we're not getting any sort of blown out highlights, and we have the attenuation turned up pretty high. And the intensity seems really, really high at the moment. That is really just due to the auto exposure. The second light 
because we were getting some interesting shadows in these areas here, and I'm going to go and let's turn off the ambience just to show everyone what this kind of looks like. So go to our environment. I'm going to put on the exposure and I'm going to drop it down just down to zero. And you can kind of see here, there's the light blasting and you can see the shadows are caused by that, the area light outside the window. And then the second area light is just sitting right here. It's got a pretty low attenuation of about 10 feet. So it's only kind of coming into the back of the room a little bit and the intensity is pretty low. It just gets rid of these harsh shadows right here. If you wanted to add some more light in the scene, you could also add a third area light pointing downwards from the top of the ceiling. And again, that would provide, as long as it's set to about 6,000 Kelvin, pretty much just a neutral generic sort of white light without adding any shadows. Now, the area light outside does have shadows enabled. The area light on the inside uh, does also have shadows enabled, but because the attenuation isn't going very far, you're not really seeing a huge amount of that. It's a very easy lighting setup. And then as long as we go back to the exposure, turn off auto exposure, because that was kind of blowing out the image a bit too much, and you'll also notice I don't have any sun pointed right into the shot. I'm trying to avoid, you know, having, you know, lighting the scene using just light rays. So we've got, you know, a HDRI sun in there, but it's not pointed directly into the building. Once we've done that, we have turned off auto exposure and manually tweaked the exposure to get the level that we want. Let's go back to our stored camera. And I'm going to put the render just on the medium setting. Again, my medium is probably about half of what the standard is. And let's just do a quick little test and see how this looks. Yeah, all in all, pretty happy with the results of this. It's a pretty easy and very straightforward lighting system that I think will work for quite a lot of people in a lot of different scenes. Now, if you've made it to this part in the video, thank you so much for watching. Really do appreciate uh, people leaving comments or liking the videos. So, uh, but thank you again for watching. So this is probably the most difficult lighting setup, at least to my mind. Interior rooms like these kind of bathrooms that have no lights. So you're forced to use an artificial lighting setup in its entirety. We cannot rely on some of the tricks that we used to use, whether it's maybe cranking up the ambience or adding, you know, a very bright skylight or maybe an area light outside a window. Those won't work here. There's another reason that we can't just shove area lights in here, and it's to do with how the path tracer handles mirrors. If we hit or on the keyboard for the path tracer, you can see we get a nice reflection. However, if you decide to add in an area light into this shot, what will happen is that light will appear in the mirror and it won't appear in the way you're kind of thinking. It'll actually just show up kind of in a sort of inaccurate looking fashion. Let's add a big area light right here and you can kind of see what's happening in the mirror. Now, if I again hit or on the keyboard, go back to the ray tracing and you can see the path tracer is reading that area light as an object, which is not what we want. And I think, you know, that is inherently sort of problematic. Let's delete that light, which I think is this one here. So how do we go about fixing this? And how do we set up a lighting scenario for an interior without windows? Now, apparently a lot of people do like doing these shots. Um, some people really like doing interior bathrooms um, allegedly, I am not one of them. And so this was kind of a chore, but let's see what we can do. First thing, let's start with the largest light source. Every bathroom is going to have at least one primary light source. And so what we have here in this case is a ceiling spotlight. It's basically just a spotlight, but I have clicked on the options here and renamed it just so I can keep track of it. And I recommend that you do that too. Ceiling light spot. This is going to be a very strong light. It is going to have a wide attenuation 
and a wide cone angle. In other words, this is going to be casting a wide dome of light and it is going to have shadows. Now I have set my color temperature to, for this one to be quite blue. This will balance nicely with some of the warmer sort of orange or cream color lights in the scene and should hopefully give a nice result. They are sort of, as you can see on the Kelvin, sort of the color temperature here, sort of mutually complementary. So that's our main light. After that, we have adjusted the emissive amount. So if I hit T on my keyboard, select these, I've taken these up to be um, about 75. So they're, they're giving a nice glow effect. They are set to a warm light as well. And then in addition, we have added supplementary lights. Now, I have about, yeah, about five spotlights, give or take, in this scene. They are also set to shadows on. They're not very strong because you do not want them overpowering the main light in the scene. And you can see the cone angle is pretty narrow. These also have shadows enabled, and that should give you a really nice dynamic look. You kind of do want to avoid a scenario where the image has no shadows. So you're looking for something that has midtones, which will be kind of just the ambient light, the highlights from the main light, and then some of the sort of shadow or darker areas in the shot. Now we can go to our scene tree up here and turn on just lights and take a look at what else we have. This is an area light set to look sort of like dramatic lighting, kind of like under cabinet lighting, if you will. It's going to just cascade down the wall and it's set to, again, light enabled. It is quite strong, but I've changed it so that this area light is really thin and about seven feet wide. That'll give you a nice result. Um, attenuation didn't really matter too much with this one. I just want it running down the wall. I think, yeah, shadows are off because really this is just sort of, you know, cool looking lighting. We've also added another spotlight here under the lamp beside the bath. And I think again, just set to a nice warm color to offset some of the blues. Now the last light we have set up is very akin to what we did in the previous project. It's a simple area light, low level intensity, set to blue and with no shadows. And the reason we put this in is because this area here was getting really, really dark. And um, especially if you've got ceramics, it's really nice to have as wide a variety of lights as you can hitting it. Because if we actually look at the results here, yeah. It looks really, really nice. You just really want uh, as many of these like highlights as you can possibly get. Okay, uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and just take a look at the final render for this one. And, and so there you have it. There is our finished render, at least in the viewport path tracing settings. Again, for all of these, I've done no post-production. This is just the lighting environment working with the materials in all of these shots. So really what we're just looking at is the default high path tracer. If you've made it to the end of the video, thank you again so much for watching. The point of this video was to take a look at four different scenes and examine the different lighting setups that you can use. Hopefully one or two of them will be useful to you going forward. And hopefully you'll find that setting up lighting in your twin motion path tracer scenes, especially for beginners, has become easier. All right, I'm going to go ahead and leave it there. Uh, cheers.